So we step aside from the highlights in this special episode as we go behind the scenes as we focus in on the girls' basketball and hockey teams as both prepare for what they hope to be long tourney runs, the MIAA playoffs. If you've ever been fortunate to watch the Raiders girls' hockey team compete, you will find the players may change year after year, but what never changes is team chemistry. With that chemistry comes an intensity that just never lets up. It's what drives every player in the locker room to go out on the ice, give their best, and be confident in the outcome. That confidence and determination is key as this Raider team looks to make it to the Garden for the third straight year. Um, it definitely changes a little bit because, I mean, we've made it to the Garden twice, but we also want to get back there. So I think everybody picks up the intensity much more, knowing that if we lose a game, that we're out for good and the season ends. So I think keeping that in the back of your mind is a huge for us. Team chemistry in the locker room is definitely funny. Um, there's a lot of dancing and singing. Put the music on really loud. Um, <laughs> some absurd things are said. I mean, we have really early and late and then late night practices, so I think that really brings the team together. Even before we, we reach the playoffs, just regular season games, uh, kids have done a tremendous job with that. You now they understand it's the most important game on your schedule is the next one, the one that you're playing right now. They bring all their focus and all of their knowledge, whatever they might know about uh, you know, some personnel for the other team that they've played with or against before. Um, so their focus on each individual game has been uh, uh, excellent all year long. Well, this young team has greatly benefited from the leadership of their four senior captains, Danielle Hickman, Sophie Vernon, Carly Boyle, and Kylie Noonan, as all of them have dominated the first line. And as these captains truly appreciate the important role they have as team leaders, the potential they already see in these fast second and third lines, with players like Phoebe Lawrence, Katie Hawkinson, and Hannah McDougall, who have already made an impact, the team depth runs deep, with so many young players ready to step up on any given night. And that leaves the captains even more confident in whatever comes next. Um, I think I've embraced that role definitely by leading, by example, especially in practices. I think we've tried to really put on everyone that we have to work hard, so skating full speed throughout all the drills, um, but also being there for everyone, like what, pushing them, but also saying like I'm your friend and you can come to me with questions and stuff like that. Um, I feel like I've embraced that role by really helping the girls' confidence boost it. Um, we work hard in practice, give them positive encouragement, and really get on them about working hard. Katie moved from defense to offense. Um, she's really strived at that, and Phoebe is a really good player who just works her butt off all the time. She backtracks hard, she forechecks hard, she makes a lot of plays on the ice. Our third line lacks a little bit of experience, but they make up for it by working really hard in practice and in games. They know exactly what they need to do on the ice and they dump the puck in, they get off, they make great plays and overall they've really stepped it up and do the jobs that we need them to do. Uh, the captains all work pretty well as a team helping each other out. Um, they're always on the same page, they talk to each other, they know in advance you know, what the team is going to need for the upcoming game and the upcoming weeks. Um, on the ice, they're all slightly different players. We have one defenseman and three forwards. The forwards are all pretty much different style, uh, which all sort of kicks in and works together. So uh, they're all individuals, but they're all working towards a common goal. Uh, yeah, we lost a great group of seniors last year. We had some freshmen come in. We have two freshmen on our second line right now. Uh, we have uh, some kids who stepped up from JV last year. Uh, to help us out uh, in the defensive core. And uh, both of our goalies uh, played behind a senior last year. So all of those kids really, really stepped up this year and decided to, uh, you know, uh, make, make their own mark, leave their own reputation for this year. Well, the Raiders this season are extremely fortunate to have two dominating goalies in net this year, junior Alyssa Semino and sophomore Caroline Bedrosian with both getting solid starts between the pipes, whoever is in net on any given night is the confidence of the whole team. With the Raiders closing out another impressive 15-2-2 season and earning the number three spot in the postseason, getting a chance to rest up before the tourney begins just makes these Raiders even more dominating on the ice.
I think it's still the same thing. We just need to show up and play 100% and come out flying and work as a team. And I think we'll be like play really well if we work as a team. We have a lot of confidence in both goalies. They've really stepped it up this season because we lost Megan. Um, they've both done really well, and I have 100% confidence in both of them. Yeah, we've, told, we've talked to the goalies early during the year. We said, you know, uh, we're going to be switching off here and there. Uh, it was not written in stone, so if we came to a point in the season where one of them had to play two games in a row, or three, for whatever reason, uh, we did that. So, you know, it wasn't something that was an absolute hard and fast, you know, fact. Um, when you get to the playoffs, it, it's kind of the same thing. You know, we have to see what's going to be most appropriate, uh, depending on the opponent, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, I think the goalies understand that. Um, I think we're used to it. We, the long layoff has, I think, definitely helped us. Um, everyone at the end of the season was pretty tired. We had a pretty busy schedule, and we've been pushed a lot in practices, so we skate a lot, which is definitely going to prepare us for the game. And then not knowing who our opponent is is almost better for us. Um, we don't play to our full potential sometimes when <laughs> we know who we're playing. We underestimate teams, so I think the whole not knowing thing can push us to like come out fully. In the game of hockey, you always hear the words two points. But for this team, two points are more than just words. It's what defines them. That is what keeps them focused as they do their job, giving it 100% game after game. But this is not the end to their story. In fact, if these players here have any say in this, this is just the beginning. In these last few seasons, if you've ever been around this girls' basketball team, you are guaranteed to hear the words defense and BOS, Band of Sisters. But you don't have to wonder very long what those words truly mean. Because when it comes to these 15 athletes, they don't just say it, they genuinely care about each other. And that shows not only in practice, but on the court night after night. When it comes to these Band of Sisters, any player on any given night can step up and make an impact scoring. And that genuine unselfishness makes the Raiders a team truly tough to defend. But don't take my word for it. Just listen in for a few seconds on what a typical day of practice includes. Dorian's always one of the hardest working people in the gym, no matter what drill, she always gives 100%. And she's always super positive, even when everyone's not doing well, she's always one of the people who tries to bring everyone up. On any play, I know I can go to her to ask her a question, and she will always be very like honest and like let me know what I'm doing wrong or like how to improve it and I know I can count on her for that. All right, so that's nice. That's a good leader. That's the type of culture ultimately I want to I want to I want to create where it's 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 not just one person and nothing is built around one person. It's it's that you know, it could be anybody on any given night that you know, we help on defense. That's we really stress helping on defense and that we share the ball on offense. And so uh, you know, again, these last four days uh, have been really good being with the girls. They've, uh, they've shared, I've shared, and uh, I just feel like we're in a really good spot right now and truly a band of, a band of sisters. You know what, when, when, when anyone has gone into the game, they've all contributed in some way, shape, or form. And again, I, I really want to emphasize these last four days, it just seems to, I hope it translates tomorrow night, but it seems like everything has clicked in. And I mean, every single player, top to bottom, has done something well. The last two practices, Natalie Hone has been our beast of the day. And that is, uh, that is recognized by the players on the team, as, as was Katrina Smith. Both of those guys were, well, Natalie was two days in a row, and Katrina and Natalie were one. I mean, so everybody is contributing top to bottom. And that's, I love that. And that's, that's also how we coach it. We're only as good as, as, as one to 15. We pride ourselves on our defense, which is together we will all play defense. And I feel that we get all our energy off of our defense. So if we have great, like a great defensive 30 seconds, our offense on the other end, we feel like we have a lot of energy and we're very successful. I feel like per position, everyone stands out. Dorian Cohen down low is very trustworthy. She always seems to get her hands on the ball, but everyone in each position does like a great job. Yeah, that's really big. We always, like, probably every practice, we do at least one defensive drill, um, and I think that's just really good at, you know, making us intense when we play defense, and um, it just helps, like, connect the team in the way that we're all trying to push for the same goal and for the same result as a team rather than just focusing on one person, and then that, like, from defense just kind of emulates, like, and goes into our offense, so we kind of do 
defense on both sides of the court. <laughs> With an extremely tough schedule and an even tougher league, this young team behind the experience of five captains who don't take their roles as leaders for granted knew going in the tests they would face as a team this season. But overcoming any challenges with hard effort, most importantly teamwork, resulted in an outstanding 18-2 season. Yeah, so I think it's, it's played a pretty big role in my life, I guess. Being on the team for four years, I've always like looked up to um, the other girls like who were captains before me and so I just really wanted to come into this season like being a leader and um, just being able to step up and fill the like roles that the other girls had in the past. It's been very important. Um, I like the responsibility of having people look up to me. I feel like I'm a role model to the underclassmen and like the captains before me I looked up to them so I hope I can do the same for the underclassmen. Every game was a test for us to be honest with you this year. I mean every, every game is a test. What really stood out to me this year is our last uh, four practices. We've had four terrific practices. Uh, I wish they were games. I mean, uh, it's it's been fun being in the gym with the girls the last four days. I mean, I don't want to have to. I don't. I don't want to have to try and do everything. And so, with you know the leadership of, of the captains, I mean, it, it, uh, three of them have been on varsity for four years, so they've got a ton of experience, and that's helpful because I, I actually think we're a young team, and so their 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 experience. Uh, is able to be shared with, uh, with some of the younger kids, especially going into the tournament. It's, it's phenomenal what they've accomplished. I mean, coming into the season, we, I, I think we had a very tough schedule. And, uh, you know, I told them on Wednesday that I thought that, you know, 18 and two is, is, isn't, what I, isn't, isn't what I thought, but quite frankly, deep inside, I thought was there. But I, I would I would never I would never share that with them or with anybody. It's uh, you know because again we had we had a very tough league, and um, but it's it's exciting to be where we're at, and I look forward to tomorrow night. Almost knocking off the unbeaten state champs Braintree, and the unforgettable opportunity to play at the TD Garden has given this team even more confidence. With well-deserved time off before the playoffs begin, there are no doubts as to whether this team is ready. With even more motivation to reach their postseason goals, the question is, is Division I South ready? Yeah, I think so. That was probably the closest game we've ever had against them. And so that, although we lost, like it really just helped us see that we can compete at like a higher level and at their level. And that, um, you know, like it was a close game until the end. And it just kind of helped build everyone's confidence that like, we can do that and going into the state tournament, that's a good mentality to have. So the garden was in January and so that was just a really fun game because um, we were playing against Needham, so obviously a big rival. Um, and it was just really cool like being able to be there and be like at the place where so many incredible athletes have played and be able to play on that floor and it was just kind of really surreal and it made us like want to come back um, again and play again there this season for the state tournament. Yeah, so for preparing, we're pretty much doing kind of the same thing that we've been doing the whole season, but we do have an added emphasis on like really getting after it with each other. And then just some of our goals is that we want to go as far as we can in the state tournament. Um, we got knocked out really early last year, so we kind of want to get back in it and go farther than we did. Probably a game that stood out in particular for the whole team was um, our game against Braintree because we were both two undefeated teams going into the game and we both are very hard working teams so we knew it was going to be a dog fight and even though it was not the result we wanted it was still a great game by both um, Wellesley and Braintree. Going into this um, state tournament we know that they're a potential game that we could be seeing in the future and we know that we have a great chance now of beating them so it gave us a lot of hope and the determination continuing on to the postseason. Our goal is obviously to go as far as possible, but we're thinking about one game at a time. We have not even thought about the next game if we are to beat Ridgewater Raynham, so we're putting all our effort and focus into each game. Well, that wraps up this special edition of Raiders Sports Block, but don't worry, we're just getting started with exciting MIAA action. Wellesley Media will keep you covered every step of the way, so if you missed any games or highlights, catch up on all Raiders sports right here on demand at wellesleymedia.org, our YouTube and Facebook pages at Wellesley Public Media, right here on Comcast 9 and Verizon 39.